This is undeniably one of the most haunted houses in America. It was the scene of a brutal double axe murder and was a place where our investigation would turn personal after being granted special permission to use a banned Ouija board in the home. I don't want to do this anymore. You know where it's going, don't you? Yeah, I don't want to do it. Hey Crypt Keepers, thanks so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt tonight. We have a very, very special investigation. Jared and I are staying overnight in the Lizzie Borden murder house and we have the entire house to ourselves. This is actually my second time staying here and my last visit, some really, really spooky, weird things happened. For Jared, it's a first. So we've got to break him in, so stay tuned. On the morning of August 4, 1892, this house in the sleepy town of Fall River, Massachusetts, became the scene of a heinous crime and would capture the public's intrigue for more than the following century. Here, Andrew and Abby Borden would be brutally murdered, hacked repeatedly with a weapon, most likely a hatchet, but widely known as being an axe. This single event would thrust the victim's daughter, Lizzie Borden, into murder suspect infamy. Abby Borden was the first to be murdered, killed while making up the guest bedroom for John Morse, Lizzie and her sister Emma's uncle, who had visited the prior night. Abby was struck a total of 19 times, perishing at approximately 9.30 in the morning. Around an hour and a half later, Andrew Borden returned home early to take a nap on the downstairs couch. Before a scheduled noon meeting for lunch with John Morse, he fell asleep, never to wake again, after being struck 11 times with the same weapon that had just killed his wife. Both Lizzie Borden and Bridget Sullivan, the family's maid, were home at the time of the murders. Lizzie would discover the body of her deceased father just after 11, with Bridget and a neighbour soon after finding Abby's body upstairs. To this day, the Borden murders remain unsolved, though many have speculated who may have been guilty or even involved. Lizzie Borden is still a prime suspect in many eyes, despite having been cleared of any charges. The former family home is even today called the Lizzie Borden Murder House. Others have placed John Morse as a suspect and even speculated Bridget Sullivan as playing a role. However, due to the passage of time, many inconsistencies in testimonies and primitive forensics, it's difficult to make any claims about the case. Though maybe, just maybe, the spirits of the house might have something to say, considering that the property is believed to be one of the most haunted places in the United States. In fact, both Andrew and Abby Borden are claimed to haunt the house. They have been sighted by many, even being captured in photographs, sometimes appearing as full apparitions, other times as dark shadows, and sometimes as misty figures. While other visitors have also claimed to hear voices, but do they have something to say? Tonight, we attempt to find out. Crypt Keepers, this is a very special investigation for me. I spent the night here maybe four or five years ago. It was one of the very first videos I ever made for Amy's Crypt. If you do go back and watch it, oh my God, I'm gonna cringe so hard. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing back then, but I did have a number of experiences in this house that I'm going to recount for you. I also wanna just say a very massive thank you and a big shout out to US Ghost Adventures who have allowed Jared and I the opportunity to be here. Last time I was here, I was here with the public. So I stayed overnight in the, one of the murder rooms by myself, but there were other members of the public here, which was cool in a way, but tonight we've worked with US Ghost Adventures to get the house to ourselves. And not only that, they have also allowed us something very, very special that they don't let anyone do or use or have inside the Lizzie Borden murder house. And that is a Ouija board. And this is a very special Ouija board. I will show you. This is from the 1920s. It has a lot of stories associated with it. This was the Ouija board that I had a very, very strange experience with last time I was at the house. This means a lot to me that I was able to have it inside the house and actually get the opportunity to use it. So thank you. I'm putting the links below. Definitely check them out because they do tours here at Lizzie Borden House. And they also do um, tours in many different states all across the US. So very cool. Oh, we're going to have some fun tonight, Jared. Are you excited? Very excited. I sort of know the story of this Ouija board. It'd be really cool to see it because I mean, I personally, I've never seen anything that's wowed me with Ouija boards when we've done, used it before. But that story which you're gonna be telling these guys later is really, really cool. So stay tuned. Currently though, in the Lizzie Borden house, this is... Okay, this is the dining room. That was that door, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Just creaked. The door just creaked or cracked. Lizzie Borden house, this is... 
Lizzie Borden House. This is, which is kind of curious because we did do the tour today, which I highly recommend. It's a lot of information you get provided about the crimes that happened and the people involved around the whole crime. The other door to this room opened on its own twice, not once, but twice. I can vouch for that, guys. We were on the tour. The tour guide was standing here, like giving the history recount of the crimes. And then this door just opened like twice. And all the other guests that were on the big, big quiet, is that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> You're so loud, Jared. All the other guests can vouch for that because they were all here when it happened. I don't know if this door just does that, but it hasn't done it since we've been here on our own. I did ask Emily, who was our guide earlier today, and she said, okay, that door cracked again, but she said that door doesn't do that. She was like, oh yeah, well, we are our own haunted house. <laughs> guide earlier today, and she said, guide earlier today, and she said, so of course we have a lot of crime memorabilia from the Borden's cast skulls and crime photographs of the impact that the murder had on their skull, as well as crime scene photographs, a lot of crime scene photographs, which is disturbing. This though is our first murder room. Just here is where Andrew Borden's body was found. This isn't the original couch, but it's pretty much in the style and look and feel of the couch. Naturally, there's a little ax here. Or hatchet, because they believe the murder weapon was actually a hatchet, right? So earlier today, we're in the house. Jared was doing a ghost tube tour, which we are going to share with my patrons and YouTube members. Links below if you want to watch the full thing. This tour was actually for his niece, who is obsessed with the Lizzie Borden house and the true crime story to go with it. So he was just taking her on a tour. What did you get in this room, Jared? So I got a few words as I approached the house, like, Am I a ghost in the cemetery? Which is weird because me and Emmy had just gone to the cemetery earlier today to visit the graves of the Borden family. But then I entered this murder room and I was explaining that this is the sofa where her father was found dead. And straight away, Ghost Tube said, wounded. And this is actually where um, her father was found. So Wounded. Wounded, yeah, exactly. Wow, that's... Uh, uh, Yes, he was wounded. He was struck. That's really cool. I just got the word wound, wounded in the murder room. That is really cool. Hang on a sec. There was more bizarre things to come through Ghost Tube that I know about because one happened when I was around the camera, which we'll explain when we get upstairs, which is creeping me out so much. <sighs> We've definitely got to come and investigate this room tonight, I think. And I think it's probably the one that all the investigators are drawn to because of what happened here. But yeah, it's definitely interesting with that wounded response I got. So this door, we're about to head upstairs. This is the door to the dining room and I've closed it. So we'll see if it opens while we're upstairs. So before we go upstairs, if there is anyone in this house, thank you for having us over. My name is Amy and I'm here with Jared tonight. We are spending the night and we hope that that is okay. We just call out to anyone and we would love to talk to you. The staircase always kind of got to me here because when you're on the tour, they tell a story. When you get to about the seventh step up, you can see right into the murder bedroom and you would have been able to see the body as you were coming up the stairs. So the body would have been just under the bed there. Okay, that freaked me out as I walked in. Making note of a wobbly light. Fitting. We have a wobbly light fitting. <laughs> see, we call out, see, we do call out and debunk stuff, guys. Like we, you know, like when there's something that we know made that noise, we'll always point it out to you guys. But it's the noises we can't explain that are more interesting. So this would have been the Borden's guest bedroom. And at the time of the murders, John Morse, an uncle of Lizzie and her sister Emma, he was staying here in this room. And they believe that Abby Borden was in here sort of making up his bed the morning of the murder about 9.30 a.m. She met the, her murderer in here. And they do say that she believed she knew who was murdering her because she kind of met them face on. Bedroom. Yep, we're in the bedroom. Can you tell me whose bedroom this is? This is where the murder happened. Right where I'm standing though. This is actually the bedroom I slept in by myself last time I was here. And one of the eeriest things that they do to you when you sleep here is they have the historic photographs of the crime. One here, 
and one behind me that's perhaps more gruesome and the bedroom's laid out in the same fashion. I'm probably gonna make you sleep in here tonight, Jared. Why me? Why? Every time we go to a place, it's like, I've got to sleep in the scary room. Why? Well, I've already done it. And I found out today there's a room where they say is the most haunted, where the most activity happens. So I'm going to go sleep in that one. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel any better. But anyway, fine. I guess I've slept in worse places on this trip. So, This is sure. a nice room. This is a nice house. It is Look nice. It. Plus, it literally just said bedroom in here. That's pretty relevant. It is so strange, like... So this is it, this is where That's it. it happened. Can you tell us what happened here? In the bedroom. Moving on, this was actually Lizzie's bedroom and she shared this space with her sister, Emma. So there is another bedroom just through there. So the murders of the Bordens have fascinated people for a long, long time. So we've got books, VHS, a whole lot of memorabilia here, including a little Lizzie doll, which I don't know how I feel about it. Well, I mean, obviously the Lizzie doll is not original, but these books I'm told are actually Lizzie's books. She liked to read a lot. Now, Lizzie, I've heard that you don't like to be called Lizzie as much as you like Lizbeth. So we can do that for you tonight. Can you give us a sign that is your preference? Natalie. <laughs> Okay, that's very random. That's not a name I know of being associated with the house at all. It could definitely be a false positive. Not everything, you know, that you get for a device you can claim as paranormal. I mean, you can't really claim anything as paranormal, but we're looking for relevance. I don't know. It's funny that I'm talking about names and I'm like, give me a sign what you want to be known as. And it literally says a whole different name. Maybe she wants a new identity completely. Did you just get a magnetic spot? Yes. I'm not even moving. Is there something here? Yeah, if there's someone around me, are you able to come close to me again and, and give me a different word? This, they say, is the most haunted, most active room. And I also heard that most of the people who spend the night in here can't actually make it the entire way through the night because it's that active. They leave, they leave the house. Is this the room you're gonna be spending the night in tonight? You betcha. <laughs> I'm excited. So this is actually Andrew and Abby Borden's bedroom. Earlier uh, tonight, because I had heard so many stories about this room, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna sit at this dresser here and do my makeup. I did my hair and makeup while sitting here and I was like, you know what? It's not me actively reaching out. Maybe, you know, while I'm spending some time here, something will feel comfortable and interact or I'll pick up on something, I'll hear something. While this was happening, Jared left me alone. So he went off to get Subway and Dunkin' Donuts coffee for us for tonight. I was hearing some noises in this room coming from that doorway or the bathroom. So either here or here, it was very faint. It wasn't very loud. And I made the decision to ignore it. And the reason I ignored it and didn't go chasing the noise was if there was something trying to get my attention, I was hoping that it would try harder because I was ignoring it. And if it wanted my attention, it would do something else. It would do something more. Nothing else ever happened. But Jared, uh, during his walkthrough with Ghost Tube earlier tonight, walked into this room while I was finishing up my makeup. And what did you get? I walked in with Ghost Tube. This is just after I'd been in the murder room downstairs and I came up to tell Amy about it and got the name Andrew. I didn't react at the moment because I'd forgotten that that was a name of relevance in this house. I was like, oh, Andrew, that's a bit random. And Amy pointed out that that is actually the name of Lizzie's father. This was his room. Just for some context to go with this clip, where we received the word Andrew through Ghost Tube, we initially just filmed this as a private video for Jared's niece, but since he documented so many responses of relevance, we decided to also share the video with our Patreons. Additionally, because Jared refers to his niece in this clip, we have bleeped out her name for anonymity. This was a video for you, but we might actually use that bit. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Did it just say Just Andrew? said Andrew. No, this is his bedroom. Wait, Andrew's the name of her dad? Yeah. Andrew Borden That's, wow. was the dad. Abby Borden was the stepmom. Are you here that with us? Two people that were murdered. Are you here with us, Andrew? 
Of course it is his bedroom, but he is also said to haunt this room. So a lot of people coming up here claim to smell something that smells a bit sickly, kind of like rotting flesh, like a dead body. But a lot of people also believe that Andrew is here. They hear his footsteps. They've seen him, full apparitions, or even shadow people, smoky, misty sort of figures. And a lot of people have found leaving money here allows them to make it through the night. And they believe because he was a pretty frugal man, he was very wealthy, filthy rich, but also kind of tight in a sense he's known for being. So people leave pennies and you, you see pennies all around this room. People leaving little offerings of money. I've got a fiver. Andrew, if you're here, Andy. I've got a fiver. I'll leave you a fiver, but I need to be super convinced of your presence. So you really need to do something to really wow me. Right now. A tenner then. Actually, do they have $10 bills in America? 20. 40. Couple things, Jared. Is this man gonna know what a fiver is? Is that slang that they would have understood back then? Also, he was a multi-millionaire. <laughs> You're offering him five bucks. Yeah, but you said he likes pennies in that, like. I don't know. I guess a tenner or a fiver or whatever you want to name it would have been worth a lot of money back then, right? All right, Andrew, name your price. What, what's it gonna be? Can you say a number for us? That would be cool if Ghost had spits out a number. How much money would it take? Actually, what am I paying for again? How much money would it take for you to do something crazy for me right now? I've never been good at negotiating. This I have heard is a staircase. He comes up and down a lot though. So this is actually the servant uh, sort of staircase, but it also goes upstairs to the attic space where the servants, or servant would have lived. This though was where the Borden's servant lived. Her name was Bridget Sullivan, but the Borden's referred to her as Maggie, which is actually kind of a derogatory term because she was of Irish descent. Did you see like a weird strange of gust or something then? Yeah, I also heard buzzing on my head. There's nothing that I know of electronic in here other than the lamp. No, this was literally on my head. My head was like this on the roof. Cause <laughs> why am I standing here? But it felt like there was like my head was crushing a blow fly and it was like bzzz. I just felt like as that was happening, I just felt like a strong gust just hit this window. Yeah play oh that's insane wait play's relevant how is play relevant okay not only do we have the servants quarters up here so we have maggie or i'll call you bridget because i'm sure that you prefer that there is also children said to horn up here <sighs> there's always children there's always children interestingly there are lesser known board and murders besides those of abby and andrew that also haunt this house many years before the axe killings within this home a relative of Lizzie's, Eliza Darling Borden, lived just next door to this house with her husband and three young children. Likely suffering from postpartum depression, Eliza sadly killed two of her three children, drowning them in an underground cistern in the home cellar, leaving just one to survive. After this, she took a razor to her throat, ending her own life. Today, many claim these children's spirits have migrated over to the infamous Borden house, with many visitors claiming to hear and sight children in the home's upper floors. I'm gonna take you straight into the children's room though. Okay, so there's two rooms back here. We've got one, and this one I know People say ch children haunt up here. Again, another magnet explain. Maybe it's the bed. You may notice a lot of toys in here. I did see that earlier today. Do you notice anything with my face and ears right now? Are you a bit red? I'm like really, really hot all of a sudden. Dude, I am too. Is my ear red? Are you feeling that as well? Is that red? Yeah, you do look red. This one? Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm like... I'm always... I was telling you I was cold before, right? Yeah, like... Okay, me getting hot, I was like, oh, maybe it's just me because we just walked up the stairs or something. But Amy is always cold, always complaining that it's too cold everywhere we go. And we actually can't adjust the thermostat here because it's locked. So we couldn't make it warmer, but you tried to. So you were definitely complaining you were cold before. 
and now like I just feel like all the blood's just rushed to my head and I'm really hot and warm. I have the exact same sensation. <laughs> are my ears actually red? They are pink, like <laughs> strips of bacon. Oh, yuck. That's really weird. I don't feel like we've ever been overcome with a sensation of warmth on an investigation before, have we? It's normally like cold chills or this is really, really weird. It's just happened in this room. Okay, if there's someone in here you want to play, can you come and grab a toy? Can you move something? Can you give us another word on the bed? At this point in the night, we decided to begin reaching out to the spirits using an SD session. We would perform this in the downstairs murder room, where Andrew Borden met his fate in 1892. This saw Jared lay down while wearing a blindfold and noise-cancelling headphones, while listening to a spirit box and relaying anything he heard come through, while I asked questions which he was unable to hear. In addition to this, we wanted to monitor for activity throughout the home, so we set up ghost tube SLS cameras in the upstairs bedroom where Abby Borden was murdered and one in Lizzie Borden's former bedroom too. Okay, so Jared is sort of laying on the You're couch. You're talking. Yeah, I'm talking. I'd love for you to talk to me. But he's kind of laying on the couch just as Andrew was found. So again, my name is Amy and there's a man on the couch over there. His name is Jared. Thank you. I also just heard some movement over here and the cat pulled it up. Five minutes ago. What, what was five minutes ago? What happened then? Wedding bells. Five minutes ago there were wedding bells? Can you tell me who I'm talking to? Why? I would just like to know. You know my name. My name's Amy. Can I know yours? I did hear some faint tapping over here as well. So I'm hearing like slight movements over here. Two. Is that how many people are in the room? They were from Where's back home. Where is home? Again. Servant. Okay, they were from back home. We're not talking to Bridget, who was Irish. Okay. Good afternoon. Do you have the time for me, sir? Original. Original. Can you tell me what the noises in the corner are? I'm feeling movement around me. That's weird because there's creaking over there. Who's over there with Jared in that corner? Amy. Okay. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. We trust. Oh, I'm glad that you trust me. Do you remember me? I was here a few years ago. Thank you for saying my name. You could do me a favor. Can you tell me who's in this corner over here? Oh. What was that for? Cat ball again. The, the ball? That just shows us that you're here. If you move them, they light up like that. Yeah, just like Back that. Back then, we didn't. You didn't have these back then, no. Do you like them? And I'm hearing more noises. I'm trying. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you trying more than you know. I'm doing my best to try and talk back to you as well so we can have a conversation, but I would love to know who you are. I swear to God, there is a noise that's coming from What over time? There. What time is it for you? This clock says 12, but it's more like 10-ish, 10.30. I'm just checking this is all on properly because I keep hearing noises. We did it. Female voice. I think that's fine. My friends. Okay. Are you confessing to something? Do you and your friends have something to confess?
A lot of creaking going over here. I also feel like I could... Is that a challenge? Yeah, I challenge you to make a louder noise for me. Are you walking around? I'm, I'm feeling movement, FYI. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm not walking around. I keep hearing noises over here though. And now I have cold chills all over my body. It's all going up my legs. Okay, you're gonna need to tell us who this is. Please, who's in this room with us? Oh, this is really eerie. It was here, whispering woman's voice. I know, I know what happened here. What, what, what are you referring to? Obviously. Yep, it's obvious to me what happened here. I want you That's to enough. Okay, I'm not trying to be smart with you. Is this house haunted? Is there a reason there's still people here? This was. This was your home, right? It's obvious. Is it all right that we're staying here tonight? I don't know. Okay, you don't know if it's okay that we stay here tonight because we, we have to, we have nowhere else to go. Are you not in charge of the house? Can I talk to the person in charge here? More than me or? She could have also said the colour red then, maybe? More than red? More than me or? More than red. Are you done? Are we? Do you have anything else you want to say? What the heck? Uh, I'm present or I'm presenting. I'm so glad that you're present tonight. Guys, I don't know what this noise is. Could it be my eyes? There's motion. Yeah. I heard the words, there's motion. Yeah. And I felt motion. Okay, I literally just walked it's over It's going. There, but... Okay, can you just make a really loud noise? What is going on inside this house? Black. Ooh. What does that mean though? It was there. Who's responsible for what happened here? What the heck? Sad. Okay, thank you for making that noise on the door. And the noise is over here. Consequence. Or consequences. I just heard a tap in there as well. Okay, what, what consequences did you have to face? Not this one. None for what happened in this room? Is Lizzie still in the house or Lisbeth? What does she prefer, Lizzie or Let Lisbeth? Let me pass. You can come through. Perfect. That's fine. Come on in. Oh my God. What are you, what are you shocked about? I know. What do you think of this guy? I don't feel good. Male voice. Okay. I feel Fine, that's weird. Earlier today we had the word wounded come through when we were talking about I see this. you. You see me? Where are you looking at me from? Can I see you? Water, or I want water. I can get you water. You want a glass of water? What do you want? Oh fuck. They said, what do you want as you just touch me? Oh, <laughs> what do you want? Weird. Can we just sit in silence for a sec and just listen? That door? Okay, it is the door. I just heard that door like go, eh, eh, eh. it's closed, but I heard it like making noise. Creaking as if it's opening, but it ain't opening. You know what I mean? Okay, so I was hearing noises that whole time. I couldn't establish what it was. I thought maybe it was the camera that on the tripod right here. No. And I was worried because it literally kept creaking so much and it sounded like maybe the camera's gonna fall off or something. I checked the camera twice and it was fine. But what was weird was as that noise was happening, you were saying 
I feel motion around me. And it sounded like there was someone in the room and you were saying, I can feel motion around me. I was over there, I was not moving. You weren't moving when I said that? No. There was one. I could feel like someone was walking past, like footsteps, because this is like creaky footboard. That's what I was feeling. I don't know if there's actually someone in here. Open the door. I just heard like something creak on the other side of the door then too. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've been hearing noises. <gasps> yep. Have they been going off? That one. Just that one. You've got to open this door for us. Come on. It sounds like the door's creaking open, but it's not. It's closed. How does it keep creaking? Like... Who's doing it? The... Oh, and that one also did too. I don't know if it was that one or that one. Can I just see that door that I closed before? And I was like, I'm closing this door as proof that we'll leave... That it... Oh, it's still closed, so it hasn't still opened. Still closed. You know what, though? To me, that just further validates what happened on the tour today. That it's still closed, yeah. And it if, opened twice. If that had opened again, I'd think maybe it's a dodgy door and it just keeps opening. But did it twice on the tour, it hasn't opened since we've been here on our own. By the way, this door leads right into the other side of the door that we could hear creaking. That's the other side of it. So there's no one in here and there's no reason it should be creaking. We need to keep investigating other areas, but I reckon this is prime spot to leave a, a still camera rigged. From here, a very strange sequence of events would transpire. The first occurred as we were discussing our next move, and then as we set up for another experiment. This began for us while taking a break in the downstairs kitchen, and unfortunately, we were not rolling on cameras. So, this room just here, you can see there's a couple of lights on the wall there. There's also a lamp to the right. It's motion activated, so when you walk into the room, it brightens up, and then after a while, it will dim down. It's bright now because we just walked through the room. We were in the kitchen, me and Amy, talking about, okay, where do we want to go next? What, what room do we want to investigate next? And I saw the lamp in this room just brighten up, so the motion sensor went I off. I seen it as well. And no one was in there. We were in the kitchen talking about the next segment. This is a lamp. Right now, it's on its full brightness, but it's motion activated. So it dims until you come back into the room and then it comes back up. This is its full. It was weird because it was as if, yeah, that just lit up and maybe someone walked past it. This is the kitchen to uh, the door to the kitchen. We were standing in there and I saw this wall illuminate. This light just went. So something triggered it in this room. And this is the murder room where we were just doing the Estes method moments before. We now wanted to head upstairs to continue our investigation, but first rigged up two static Ghost Tube SLS cameras to monitor the living room downstairs, where a motion activated light had just been triggered, and one in the dining room, where we had earlier seen a door open by itself. But now, we moved upstairs into the guest bedroom where Abby Borden had been murdered many years ago, and just as we were setting up, we documented some strange activity concerning the door to this bedroom. Okay, that light does cause... Why don't we put the light over here? on this table and then it will be illuminating the room. Did you just move that? No, I don't think so. The door just, I don't know if it moved. I went over here to say, why don't we put the light on here? Yeah. The infrared light so that it doesn't shine into that camera. And I'm pretty sure that just moved. Well, I heard it. I didn't see it. Is your mic rolling? It. Yes. This one is. I think This one's rolling audio. too. All of the mics are going. All audio is rolling. Here, you can clearly hear the door creak as we were setting up to film our next segment. Because we were not paying attention, we weren't sure in this moment whether the door had opened or closed. But from looking at the replay of the camera I was holding, you can see that the door had closed halfway, as we had left it fully open after entering the room. Although Jared did not touch the door himself, it may have shifted as he walked past and unfortunately, our cameras weren't pointed directly at the door as this happened. So we cannot say with certainty that this was paranormal. Illuminating the room. Illuminating the room. Adding to the strangeness of the door's movement, we also documented some other noises immediately after this, right as Jared was setting up his phone for our next experiment. Which I do not. I just heard a noise. Is that door moving again? I don't know.
Finally, after all of this, I noticed that the battery on the camera I was holding had been drained, despite it having just been changed over downstairs. Jared, you know what's messed up? Mm -hmm. We just that? did a battery change. This one's about to die. No way. <laughs> yeah. This was strange given that the battery on the other camera in the room was still full, though my cameras had almost fully depleted. It's a common belief in the paranormal that spirits can drain batteries to draw energy in order to manifest or communicate. So we decided to roll on a ghost tube vox session to see if we could get any further responses. If there is anybody um, that's still in this house, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How about we just start with a name? Volume. Can you tell us your occupation, perhaps? No, it's Who was sleeping in this room around the time that these murders were committed? <laughs> Whose room was this? Can you tell me what's so special about this room? Okay, there's a picture of a man on the wall over there. Can you tell me who that man is? Who is that man on the wall? Can you tell us the name of that man on the wall just to prove to us that we are trying to, that we are talking to somebody? Welcome to. Welcome to. Oh, so we're welcome in here, thank you. Join. Join. Parents? Parents? Did you hear that, no? Yeah, I did. Can you tell us how you feel about us being here or if there's somewhere else in this house you'd like us to go. Oh, Can you tell us about that door, why it was moving before? No. no. Why is it that you keep playing with the doors? Are you playing to give us a sign or is this just, maybe it's residual. How do you feel about us bringing that Ouija board back into this house? Can you tell us who was your favourite of the Bordens? I heard I have children. How many children? So guys, I'm just going to get the white noise going because one of the theories is that white noise can help conduct paranormal activity. So when I remove my finger from the mute button, you're going to hear the white noise. Again, is there anyone in this room that's talking to us at the moment? Miss hmm? Borden, did you see who hurt you? My people. My people. Did you hear that? Very clearly, a woman's voice, my people. Okay, Miss Borden, thank you if that is you. Can you share a name? Do you know their name? How did you feel? Judgment? Really? Can you tell us the weapon that was used? Where shall what? we start? Well, you can start by telling us the weapon. Mrs. Borden, I'm hoping that this gives you a voice. Is there anything that you would like to be made known to everybody? I'm sure you get a lot of visitors here asking questions. A lot of people want to know about what happened to you, if you have any knowledge, if you have any clues, anything that you want to share. Now's your time. Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah. I remember. Just, yeah. I just heard more cracking over here. I heard I remember. Can you tell us what you remember? I did it. That was a male's voice though. Yeah. What did you do? Sorry. Sorry. Why are you sorry? There are a lot of voices coming through. Are you able to tell us how many people are in the room with us right now besides Jared and I? There's a kid. There's a kid. There's a kid. Where is the kid? I thought the kids were upstairs. Hi, I'm not. I'm no, not. I'm not. You wanted to play with us earlier. Since we felt as though we had some childlike responses come through, we thought we would try a short Vox session inside Andrew and Abby Borden's bedroom to see whether anything of relevance came through before heading upstairs to where the children supposedly haunt. Here, the very first response we documented was of extreme interest. Holy Spirit. Holy experience. Holy I heard Holy Spirit. They were religious, right? Can you tell me your religion? Do you remember either of our names? I feel like I heard obvious, and that's something that you said well, a said few that. times yes. during the Estes downstairs. I apologize. I'm not sure what is obvious. Are you able to tell me very clearly? I'm really, really sorry. I'm ignorant. I don't know. They say that the people leave money here, right? Yeah. Andrew, I'm going to take a coin here. I'm going to take a coin here. How does that make you feel? Only one. Did you have one in your hand? I've got one right here, yeah. It said only one. Okay, can you have more than one? I'm gonna take two. You take. You take. I'm taking two. You how, take. Does, how does that make you feel? Do you mind? Do you have to stir them up in the room? The most haunted room that I have to sleep in, Jared? We continued reaching out for some time in Andrew and Abby's bedroom, but with no further responses, we decided to move upstairs into the room children are said to haunt, as we felt like some childlike communication had already come through. Here, we wanted to perform an EVP session and hoped the children, if any were around, would come out to play. Tonight's been weird, and we honestly felt like maybe children were coming through Ghost Tip Box when we were downstairs in the murder room, so we've come up to your space. And I really hope there are some children here that want to talk to us. Already to my side, I've had the REM pod go off numerous times. Is this gonna be a night vision segment? Oh. If you touch any of the toys here, oh my God, I did not touch that. Thank you so much. You were just saying. I, know, I literally said, if you touch any of the toys here, I didn't actually touch it, but that's exactly right. If you touch any of these toys here, you can make some flashing lights light up and maybe that just shows us what toy you want to play with. Yep, definite noises in here. <gasps> That was from the camera then. I just feel like we got like noises all around us then. Yep. Yep. <gasps> Thank you. It's going off, it's going off, it's going off. Rolling on an EVP session. Uh, can you come close to the lights in my hand? I feel like there's somebody in here and we would love to know your name. If you could just say that really loud for us. Can you tell us which of these toys are your favorite? We continued this EVP session for some time, but nothing of interest was documented in the recording. So we tried a different approach to communication. 
I think my favourite is this one. Can you show me your favourite? You like that one too? Oh, thank you. I can't believe that just came up like... And, and again. again! What thank the hell? Thank you so much. I like the little mummy. Oh my god. Do you like the other toys as well? You can like the other ones up too. Just like the mummy. Yeah, you know what's funny? The mummy's I the actually, best one. I actually pulled that mummy out earlier on when we were doing our walkthrough. Do you want me to play with that toy? Can you light it up if you want us to stay? <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> oh. Oh! <laughs> Thank you so much! So you want us to stay? That's going nuts! <laughs> Thank you! That pool's still going too. Having just had some of our devices trigger, we decided to once again attempt to capture an EVP, yet only one moment of interest was documented in the recording. Did you try to get us up here to play with us? There's something there. Did you try to get us up here to play with us? Did you try to get us up here to play with us? Something moves in the room. Mm. I don't remember that happening. With the night wearing on, we decided to try one final experiment before heading to sleep, something that has been banned within the house for some time. We reached out using a Ouija board and one that has some dark stories attached to it. This would be where we picked up on something that neither of us were prepared for. So this is the board. I actually think this was the very first Ouija board I ever used. And this is sort of what gave me weird results here at the Lizzie Borden Motor House when I was here years ago. Thing about the Ouija board is, I wouldn't say I'm scared of them. I wouldn't say I think that they're evil. I just think that what happened with this board and me is pretty weird. Essentially my story guys, I came here years ago. This was before my channel was really anything and I was interested in the paranormal. I came here, I was staying by myself, but Lizzie Borden House was booked out, so there was numerous other people staying here. I did play the Ouija board in that room and this room with numerous people. It tended to really only move when myself and another girl who I had made friends with on that night were using it. That's kind of weird because we were getting a lot of answers. It was spelling things out, it was using yes and no a whole lot. And it really felt like we were talking to somebody and I've never had an experience like that on the Ouija board since then. Part of me felt like, hey, I just met this girl. Could she just be doing it? Although I thought that she was, she seemed pretty hesitant and scared about it herself so I didn't think that she was putting it on. But I asked a question that she just would not have any knowledge of. I said, can you spell out my middle name? And it did. And ever since then, I've always felt like, wow, that was really weird. Was there someone here who knew something about me, could read me? Was it just me doing it myself? And I've wanted to play this Ouija board. This specific one, right? This exact this board. This very one in this very house. And now, this board's old. Like it was. This is from the 1920s. Wow, it was vintage. What's funny about this is we come here today, we did the tour, I didn't think about the Ouija board at all, and then I asked the guide at the end of the tour, hey, do you still have those Ouija boards that you had years and years ago? And she said, well, yeah, one of them actually got stolen. And I said, oh, it wasn't that really old one from the 1920s? And she said, yeah, it was, but it came back. Allegedly, a couple of guys stole this board. They freaking stole it which is wrong, like don't do stuff like that. Something happened that was very dark and that scared them so much so that they bought this board back, they returned it to the house because they were like, no, we, don't, we can't have this around us, we can't have this negativity, it scared us. Wow, so this board in particular has a bit of a story. Should I we guess we're that? gonna put it to the test because I'm still not convinced about Ouija board guys, so let's do it. Honestly, it means a lot to me that we're able to do this in the house because I don't allow Ouija boards. This is actually in the museum gift shop and they don't ever let it back in the house because of the weirdness. So and we've got special permission guys from US Ghost Adventures, so big shout out to them for letting us use it tonight because we, we wouldn't big, be doing this without permission. Big no, no. To me that we're able to do this in the house because they don't allow Ouija boards. That's not you. This is not me. 
Maybe give us the first letter of your name. This planchet doesn't have that little glass thing on it. No. So is this supposed to point at stuff? I guess so. So I feel like it's rotating. Well, maybe it's trying to go to a letter down that end of the board. So I'm on it so lightly. I feel yeah, like my I'm fingers like, are coming off. I feel like I keep accidentally lifting off the planchet. Is that normal? How do you know when it's like done? It should stop. I feel like it's on K. K. Are any of the names here start with K? So K, can you tell me, do you remember me? Can you line up a cat ball if it's yes and then we don't have to wait? What was that? <laughs> there was just a huge crack in There's there. There's a huge noise over there. Is this how slow it was for you when you asked yeah. it to spell out your name? So it was a very slow process. It was slow. It may be a bit quicker than this, but it was not quick. I mean, if you watch my original video, I have some Ouija board clips in there, but they're highly sped up. Let's go with A or maybe a B. Okay. Well, there's no other letters that way, so... We would like you to tell us something. Can you spell out a word for us? Are you moving this? I'm not moving this. R. You sure you're not moving it? I'm not moving this. What's R? I just feel like I know where this is going. You're not moving it. O. You know where this is going, don't you? Yeah, I do. No. Are you moving this? I'm not. I'm not. I honestly, like, I cross my heart, I'm not. You know what I'm thinking about, right? <laughs> This has been happening to me ever since the Sally house. I know. Do maybe you want it's to not. Keep going? Maybe it's not. All right. Are you going to finish what you're trying to say? This is going to make me cry. I'm not even like exaggerating. Carrot. <laughs> Maybe it's carrot? <laughs> carrot. <laughs> what was that? Oh, my fingers have come off now, does that matter? There's definite movement in this house. It's freaking me out. I can see both of our fingers are on this thing so freaking light as well. Yeah, like I can literally well, see. But these two fingers aren't even on. Mine aren't even on it. Is this how slow it is for everyone else? By the way, if anyone uses these, like, is it normally subtle or is it like, choo, 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 you know what I mean? Because I've seen other people do this and it's going crazy, but I don't want to do this anymore. You know where it's going, don't you? Yeah, I don't want to do it. All right. How do we um, end and say we goodbye? We are going to say goodbye. Thank you if there's someone here trying to talk to us. We're gonna to go towards goodbye and maybe you can use a different way to talk to us tonight. So we know where this is going. That's weird. So everyone that's watching us and has been watching us, especially since the Sally House knows that I've been getting taunted. Um, I don't think you've been getting taunted, okay. People might not have made the connection, but K-A-R-O. L. That's where we felt like it was going, right? Mm. It actually took me a little second to click onto it, but when you were like looking at me, like, what are yeah. you fucking doing? What are you doing? Like, no, why would I do this? No. So, guys, I don't think that there's, there's, I don't think that's someone that's coming to me that I know called Carol talking to me or anything like that. There's something else about that name that is relevant to me, and it's almost like taunting like at the sally house i got that name come through with like laughter like someone laughing at me and that is relevant to that name this is the same exact same feeling i had with this board when it said my well spelt out my middle name it made me feel like i my eyes were you know welling up with tears that is the exact same feeling i just had but it was for you this is weird when are we going to tell everyone i don't what know what the relevance of that name is 
If you have been watching my channel over the past 12 months, you've likely seen the name Carol come up and heard us talk about the name having personal relevance to Jared. The first instance of this was at the Sally house, where there's a debate as to whether a little girl named Sally or a demon impersonating a little girl exists. Here, Carol came through during an SD session. Here, Carol. What? That name holds relevance to me. What do you know about Carol? Can you tell me more about that? Laughter. That is also relevant. I'm actually getting chills. And then kid's voice. Their name had never come through in any other investigation until this point, and soon after this, Carol would come through once again while investigating the Fairfield County Infirmary in Ohio. This is a place haunted by its dark past, being used as a poor farm to house people with physical and mental health issues, or who were too old, sick, or orphaned and unable to care for themselves. Here, Carol came through during an SD session once again. And stay down, like maybe that's... Jared! <gasps> that's him, that's his name, yeah. You're allowed to talk to us, whoever wants to talk. It also just said Carol. No. You'll have to bleep that out, I don't want that in the video. You've got to be f***ing sh me. A few days after this instance, we travelled to the West Virginia Penitentiary, a former prison which at a time was classed as being one of the most violent institutions in America. Here, Carol came through via ghost tube. No! That name and that has relevance to me. It is something personal about me that keeps coming up in all of these videos. It's really, really weird. Like I'm actually officially freaked out. Weeks later, we would film this Ouija board session at the Lizzie Borden murder house and once again receive the name. Since then, we have only received the name Carol during one other investigation. This time, the name was also accompanied by the word husband and came through while filming in Lep Castle, one of the most haunted places in Ireland. Glad you agree with me though. It would be pretty cool for one of these candles to go out. Carol, husband. Some personal stuff there, guys. That name keeps coming up. And paired with um, the word husband, that is relevant for me. Previously, we've been hesitant to share the relevance of Carol due to family relationships and issues of our personal lives being invaded. But we feel now is the time to share the meaning behind Carol. You see, Jared is not actually Jared's name. It is his middle name. Jared's first name is Carol, spelt K-A-R-O-L. This name is of European descent and a name that runs in Jared's family. Although Jared is proud of his name's heritage, he has never been referred to as Carol throughout his life. Likely as it is not a common name for a male in Australia. I do want to add here, however, that we do not believe a past family member of Jared's is contacting us. This has always felt like someone simply letting us know that they have information about us, knowing personal details about our lives. We're still learning who or what may be around but we will provide updates in due time. Yet, at this point in the investigation, Jared did not want to continue use of the Ouija board, which I can understand. Tonight, it's been so weird, so interesting, really cool. We're about to go to sleep, but I mean, there's still a few more hours of the night to go. So of course we're gonna rig up cameras. I'm gonna send Jared to sleep in the murder room, which he's stoked about. But I'm gonna sleep in Abby and Andrew's room, which is allegedly the most haunted one. I've already survived a night in the murder room, so I feel like I should try a different room. And we'll see if we pick anything up on the infrared cameras while we're asleep. Amy has slept alone in this room before, so I guess it technically is my turn but it is a little bit unsettling. It also doesn't help when you find this under your pillowcase when you get into bed. Night, Jared. Good night. Night. See ya. Night, spirits.
hearing noises. Jared? Yeah? Are you like freaking moving around down there or something? No, but I felt movement too. Could you hear shit too? I couldn't hear anything, but I felt it. I just am hearing stuff. I'm not moving around, no. Right. What are you hearing? It sounds like creaking. I've heard a few little cricks and cracks down here, but just then I felt like my pillow moved and the bed was sort of like vibrating as if someone was walking around. Just lay down flat and feel and listen. The Lizzie Borden murder house is a truly fascinating place, not only for its rich history soaked in true crime, yet for the strange experiences many have reported within the home. It was a truly amazing opportunity to spend another night within this haunted house, and especially to have been allowed to use a banned Ouija board within its walls, although I do feel that I left with even more unanswered questions compared to my last visit. But if you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed and have your notification bell set to all, as next week we visit another extremely haunted house house, but this time in England, said to be plagued by poltergeist activity from an evil entity dubbed the Black Monk. You won't want to miss our overnight stay at 30 East Drive. Alright guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Jared and I are actually about to head to sleep now, but by the time you're watching this, you've already seen what happened whilst we slept. Hopefully, we get some good paranormal activity. I don't know if future Amy would have already edited in anything that we did capture, so hopefully it was cool. But hopefully you've enjoyed the whole Lizzie Borden murder house experience. It has been a genuinely weird night on a personal level and as an investigator, and I can't tell you how amazing it feels to be able to come back and to experience this building again and to bring Jared along this time. This was one of the first videos that I ever tried to film for my YouTube channel so it feels like yeah a little time capsule of Amy's Crypt history. It's very meaningful for me to come back here. So yeah I'm just glad that I get to share it with you guys but I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe because that really, really helps us out. You want to do any more reading about this place, head to amyscrypt.com where you can read a blog article that I wrote years ago about this place. You can also follow us on social media at Amy's Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And I post bonus content on my Patreon and YouTube members that are linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching and until next time.